In this video, I'm breaking down all the electronic drums that Neil Peart uses in his setup. That's coming up. What's up? Justin here. Welcome to 65 Drums, the place to keep on top of all things electronic drum related. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day. So Neil Peart is a living legend. Thank God he's living because there's a lot of legends in music that have been dying recently but his drum set is probably almost as legendary as him. So these are the pads that he uses. I know there's a lot of different Neil Peart drum sets. I'm just gonna be talking about all of them as a whole. I might be referencing certain drum sets more than others, but that's because uh, certain drum sets have more press, more details of what he's actually been using in those sets. And also, at certain times, Neil Peart doesn't use electronic elements at all. Sometimes he goes really heavy on the electronic elements. So let's take a look at this drum set right here. As you can see, a full third, or at least a quarter of it, is electronic elements. Now this platform actually rotates around him and he plays the electronic section during a certain part of the gig. He mostly uses rolling pads, but not all the pads are the actual rolling pads. His drum tech actually rips out the internals, like the trigger unit outside of the pad, and uh, DW actually builds a custom shell so that they can put those rolling triggers into it. That's amazing. They've actually nicknamed one of the electronic kick drums, Wendy, for some reason. They don't even know why it got nicknamed Wendy. But a good chunk of these electronic pads don't even look like electronic pads because they're mounted in DW Collector Series shells. Now, there was a time when he was using those uh, rolling pads from the TD-10 back when they had that red finish, if you remember that drum set. But that fit in with his overall set at that time, which was also red. Now the cymbals are all Roland as well. A lot of times he's using those metallic cymbals, so the TD-20 SX cymbals or the Roland TD-30 KV cymbals. He really loves Mallet Cats. This is a Mallet Cat Express. They actually added a custom copper finish in this one themselves. He uses this for a lot of different things. It's probably one of his favorite elements of his drum set. So for example, on the song Spirit of Radio, he does the bells on this. Also, during soloing, he's using it as a marimba. In a lot of other songs or solos, he just has a compilation of sound effects on them, basically samples. So he just hits one of the pads and a sample is triggered. But another cool way that he triggers samples without you even noticing are those fat cat trigger pedals on the floor. Now this rubber pad right here with the target on it, that's a Dawes custom trigger pad. The target's actually a Who reference. And it's one of those things that stands out, but you don't necessarily think that's an electronic drum pad. Now his drum guy did a really cool interview, which I'm gonna link down in the description below. I'm gonna link a ton of different stuff down there, so be sure to go check it out. But uh, he said that all the pads are directly tied into drum modules, and those drum modules are tied into a sampler rack unit. So let's talk about all the modules and all the stuff he uses there. So he first started off with Roland TD-10 drum modules, and then he moved on to Roland TD-20s, and now he's using Roland TD-30s, and obviously he's gonna move on to Roland TD-50 drum modules at some point if he isn't already. I mean, a lot of the articles I read, they aren't all from yesterday, so some of this stuff is a little bit old, but we're talking about his career as a whole and how he uses electronic drums. So as you can see, he's using two drum modules there, and both of those are running into MIDI displays, his sound tech can actually see the MIDI notes as they're played in real time. Now the MIDI information that came from the Roland drum modules is also going to Roland XV5080 samplers. And then of course he's got glyph hard drives that actually hold the samples themselves. He's using a monster power conditioner and what surprised me was that he's using a Behringer line mixer. Now in one interview I saw, he wasn't using a laptop at all. All this was going on with these rack units and that's sent off to the sound guys. But apparently all the trigger samples are processed by Ableton Live now. I don't know if that means he's using a laptop now or all this sound stuff is being sent to a laptop after all the rack units are done processing it. I don't know really the order of all this stuff. Again, we don't know everything about his drum set, but that's the gear he's using. So as I was doing the research for this video, I was of course watching and reading a lot of Neil Peart interviews, him talking about different electronic drums he's used and his mentality towards electronic drums. Here are a couple of really interesting things that he said about his whole setup. I first introduced Roland V drums into my setup in 2001, during the writing and recording of our Vapor Trail album. On the subsequent tour, they became a fixture in my drum solos, as well as to trigger samples throughout our live show. I also played the V-Drums in our 30th anniversary tour in 2004, on the Snakes and Arrows album, and tours in 2006, 07, and 08, and now on our 2010 Time Machine tour. Over the years, the V-Drums have continued to improve in touch sensitivity and in sound quality and variety. I still find them not only fun to play, but a great creative addition to my percussion world. There's a really cool CBC music interview video you've got to go check out after to this one, I'll link it in the description below. I like it because it talks about his electronic setup, something that just doesn't get a lot of press. 
But this is a snippet of what he said. Even from the electronic kit, I can reach a lot of acoustic stuff. So I can get to a real snare drum, a real tom-tom, and real cymbals. Because as fun as electronic drums are, and as much versatility as they have now, and the surface even is quite fun to play on, but it can never have the dynamics of moving air that real drums and cymbals have. So it's the combination of them that gives me the dynamism of acoustic drums, and then a virtual orchestra of sounds that electronic drums can offer. So each of them is a tool as part of a sound palette to be applied to do the job that's necessary. I think that quote really sums up how Neil Peart looks at electronic drums as a whole. Obviously, he's been a big supporter of electronic drums. I think he really has helped legitimize electronic drums in a lot of drummers' eyes because he's a legend and he plays electronic drums. And he's very, you know, out front there about how electronic drums can really help, you know, add sounds and add texture to your drum setup. But also, he sees them just as a tool. He uses them for their strengths. He realizes they'll never be acoustic drums, but he can use them for what they're best at, creating whatever sound you need at a moment's notice and being quiet. So he combines acoustic and electronic, and I think that's the best way to use electronic drums. I wish I could sit down and play this drum set before a security guard would find me and throw me out of the building. But yeah, this is a really, really cool drum setup. And again, this is only one of many different drum sets that he has. You know, it's funny, during one of his interviews, he mentioned that he did not like 1980s electronic drums. He said they didn't sound that great. So he actually sampled his voice making drum sounds. So, doo, 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 doo. he actually sampled his voice to make snare, tom, and kick drum sounds, and he used those instead of 80s electronic drum sounds. I'm gonna be linking a lot of different articles, a lot of different videos in the description below, so be sure to go check them out if you wanna learn more about Neil Peart's setup. Now, obviously, Neil Peart has been drumming for years and years and years. He's been drumming for longer than I've been alive. That's obvious. So he's probably played other electronic elements that I did not mention in this video. So if you notice anything that's missing, leave it down in the comments below. If it's something particularly valuable, I'll probably pin that comment. One last question. What's your favorite Rush song? Let me know. I'll see you in a few.